Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, you may have noticed that this week we have a bit of a theme around sort of uh, highlighting participation and learning how to participate more effectively. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do this week is bring in some organizations and contributors at those organizations who have been highly effective at participating in open source projects and talk to them a little bit about how they do that. How does it work out well for them? How does it work out well for their organizations? And you know, what are their motivations? What drives them? And what makes it successful? So uh, we have a few panelists here with us today. Uh, I'm Allison Randall. I serve on the board of directors of Open Infrastructure Foundation, as well as uh, Open Usage Commons and the Software Freedom Conservancy. Um, first, why don't you introduce yeah. yourself? My name is Ghansi Amman. I work full time in upstream, especially in like NOAA API site stability QA, then helping technical committee. I'm also involved from NEC. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Mohammed. I've uh, been involved in OpenStack for quite a few years now across several different roles. Um, and I uh, lead a company that kind of focuses on providing infrastructure solutions with the open infra projects mostly. Okay, and I'm Luis, and I'm OpenStack operator at CERN. Um, my experience with uh, OpenStack started around 11 years ago. Um, here I am, so it's really nice to be here. Before we get started, tell us a little bit about how you got started in open source and kind of what motivates you to stay involved. Yeah, so <clears throat> I started around 10 years back. So one thing like I really liked in open source, like as a developer also, like you grow a lot. So you get a chance to work with a lot of people from different country, different like culture and obviously the unlimited technical knowledge so you can gain and obviously you can help the new people to gain the same and overall like if you you are like contributing in open source and you are building the relationship that you can convert in your organization to help in existing business or like attracting the new business also so that's what motivated me and that's from like I started and continuing in in the open source since then. Yeah. For me, uh, my organization, Nexos, we, uh, we were kind of looking at finding a way to provide cloud. Uh, and at the time, it was very early on, and we we're looking at this OpenStack thing. And we realized that everything we were doing is exactly what OpenStack was doing at the time. So we said, OK, why aren't we just you know, join them and, and work together with them? Um, and so that's what we started doing maybe 11 years ago by now. Um, and it's a very interesting journey because once we started, we realized that um, it's such a, a, a fun um, collaborative um, community in general. So for me, I've never had open source exposure before OpenStack, um, but it's very interesting because um, you first of all get to get access to a lot of very knowledgeable individuals. So you get to learn a lot from them. Um, and, and it's really fun because sometimes, you know, when you're doing something inside of a, a silo, it's hard to, to find help outside of it. Um, let's say, you know, if you're working on, let's say, a closed source project with an internal team, you just have you and your team. Whereas with, with OpenStack, there's, you know, in, in my case, there's so many people around us and you can bring it up and somebody else has had similar issues. Um, and then it's really interesting because you gather this knowledge and you learn more. And so uh, it's funny, I always say this, my first contribution to open source was actually a typo fix in, in Nova. Um, and back then, Nova was so uh, untested that it was like the function argument name did not even match the variable name used in the function. Like that never had passed any tests at all. Um, but it was like that kind of, you get that and then you kind of work with someone that helps you land it and then eventually it kind of Make, motivates you to do more and more uh, in, inside that. In, in my case, at a professional level with open source, I started as well when I joined, joined CERN in 2012. Um, basically, I was hired to work in the um, adding support or deploying hyper compute nodes in our cloud. And this was an amazing experience because I got at a personal level, you get to collaborate with back in the day with Peter from Microsoft or the Alessandro from Cloudbase. You you meet them, you you create new and you give your feedback, you you you, you design how the, the, the tool is going to, to work, etc. So that is very, very rewarding. And then 
I was lucky as well because back in the day it was when this agile project at CERN started. So it was this project where we were adopting many open source solutions like OpenStack, um, Puppet, Foreman, uh, Ceph. So basically we were moving um, all the IT department from um, um, in-house software to more open source communities and being able to experience that transition, how the, the let's say the culture of the department towards open source changed and adopted all these projects is something that over time you see the benefit. And this is obviously at a personal level where I think this was useful because as they were saying, you feel rewarded something that you like, you contribute, you feel fulfilled in your profession and that is very positive. But then you can see the other side, the side of the organization that you trust a technology like OpenStack to be a core um, tool in your infrastructure. So you obviously want, want to make sure that that um, community is healthy. So you want to contribute uh, with, with code and things like that, but also with doing outreach. So if it's something that works for you, you kind of uh, show others how they can adopt it. So they can join the community if it's something useful. Um, then you, I think for the organization is, is positive to leverage all the community because I don't know, instead of doing all the things downstream, you kind of um, uh, move all your modifications uh, to the community and, and then you, you, get to, you have this critical, critical mass to move your things over time to new releases. So it's something that's beneficial for you. Um, same thing with, I don't know, debugging fixes or, or um, getting input because Something that in these transformations of the CNIT department with all these tools, something I think that it works is all the feedback that the different communities, so yeah, OpenStack, Puppet people, uh, and self were getting while going to conference, etc. It's like, oh yeah, these people that are doing this here and there, maybe we should change the way we do things. So you get all this knowledge from other places, and I think this is something very positive. And the last point, because I, I think there are so many points that we, we, we could be talking for, for half an hour just about them. It's like CERN is a public organization, so it's, we are funded by public money. So one of our, um, let's say, goals or mission is to give back to society. So one of the ways of giving back to society is contributing to this open source project that then can be adopted on the different countries that they are funding us. And also part of our mission is to train engineers and professionals. So we see we get all these people coming from the different countries to CERN with, know, in the case of IT, with maybe a, a basic kind of Linux profile. And then they get to inter start interacting with these communities. They get skills over time. And then when, when they leave CERN, they leave CERN as uh, trained engineers in, in these different fields. So have they, they have more chances of, of getting maybe a, maybe a, a more high-skilled job in the community with maybe knowing already some people. So this, I think, this is very valuable. Yeah, that's great. And you talked about contributing upstream. So let's, let's dive in a little more to some of the ways that your organizations participate uh, in open source projects. And starting with a simple one, bug fixes. Kind of how do you view bug fixes, contributing the ups, them upstream, and you know, the value that your organizations get out of doing those that work upstream? So, so that's a really important thing because if you see like software, you see like it has been developed initially, they do the basic things and features obviously keep going. But bugs are the important part like where one thing like we cannot test everything in upstream. We don't know every use case in upstream. So filing the bug is very important and then how you fix the bug in upstream is a very small, small help, but it contributes a lot. And in my company, like I have seen a uh, few of the team like were facing customer and uh, they know like the some of the bug they as per their use case and all so they keep uh, uh, coming to our upstream team and they're saying like in my company upstream team we have a group of people so they say like okay this is the bug and we want to fix it and we like sometimes we like directly go and fix them but sometimes we tell them like you go and file the bug you talk to the community if you need help like how what is the process of fixing the bug and code getting the review then we will help you so that's like something we think like is really important and spread that people facing either a customer team or you're from different team within company you start like contributing with the bug fix and bug filing yeah 
And I agree with that. And I think what's really interesting in, in doing open source is if you've had the, um, if you've worked with, a, a, let's say, a closed source commercial product, uh, it can get very frustrating if you have a more technical background because you'll see an issue in front of you, but you're just kind of helpless in, in how you can fix it. You can't do anything about it. You can't change it. You can just you know, file an issue and hope that somebody gets to it. Uh, the nice thing with open source is that you know, when you run into small issues or bugs, you can go in and look into it yourself. You, know, you can go in, and, and what's great is it's not just code, right? There's history behind the code. You can go and look into like a git blame and see exactly why that line changed or when it changed. If you've upgraded OpenStack and saw behavior change, you can go in and see the commit and the exact time that it was done. And then you can go and look at the review and see why the discussion was done and, and why it was done the way that it was done. Uh, and so I think that's really powerful when you're trying to solve uh, bugs as well. Um, so that's a really, really important thing. And, and by being part of the upstream community, um, you know, you, you get to be part of the team and, and maybe you see a change, like I might, you know, for example, you know, Gunshot works a lot with the RBAC things and if I see an RBAC related thing, I can reach out to him and say, hey, we were looking at this thing and um, we think this is a problem here and what are your thoughts are? So you kind of get this extended team that you can also talk about bugs and, and, and I also think it's interesting at the OpenStack PTGs where the project teams gather, I've had so many scenarios where you'd know, be sitting in a room and someone would come in and, and bring up a bug and then the team would say, actually, we've designed it in that way and, and you need to do ABC instead. And it's really fun and, and interesting to see kind of that moment where people are like, wow, okay, no, I, I understand why you do that now. And, and so you get, you get a lot of that um, knowledge um, and, and, and yeah, so fixing bugs is easy, filing bugs is just as important. Um, and a lot of us, you know, when we're troubleshooting, we're going through the code, and, and sometimes you can pinpoint exactly where the fix is. Um, and and some, of, some, some folks just make that change inside their environment. But I, I assure you the delta of extra work that you need, might need to do to contribute it upstream on that time that you fix that is way less than the delta of maintaining that thing forever because um, you just start to get, you know, you, just, you, you don't just edit the code once. You have to keep maintaining it. And so by pushing it up, uh, first of all, you get two things, right? You don't have to maintain it in no sense. But secondly, you might actually get an approval telling you um, that you're doing the right thing because you've got core members of the project that have years of experience that'll say, oh, good catch, or they might say, it's nice that you caught this, but in two years, this is going to break horribly when we do this other thing. So it's always really good to, to bring those things upstream because you get that um, feedback that you wouldn't be able to get if you're doing it in, in a local or kind of on your own. So really important to bring that knowledge up um, and kind of consider the upstream teams as like an extension of your own uh, team and your own work. Yeah, I think I, I couldn't add more than that. But, uh, <laughs> I think the, the important is that um, in this case, because sometimes I think people they have this idea that contributing is just writing code. I think it's important that the, something as simple as pre, uh, proposing uh, or reporting a bug upstream can be valuable because yeah, it raises awareness that something is going on. Also, even if sometimes you can feel frustrated because maybe you don't have the, the time or the experience to maybe tackle it and, and implement it, but maybe sometimes you can just as easy as giving feedback while it's implemented, because in my case, as an operator, maybe I now have some knowledge of the implications of, or the bug. So uh, this is something that happened recently with something that the, we reported in Manila, uh, the Manila developer state fix, and I was keeping a look to the review and I see the way they were implemented uh, could affect the behavior, in this case, with safe behind the scenes, some default behavior, so you give your input. You didn't implement the fix, but you put your small uh, feedback there that will help this to be a more um, a solution that, yeah, it will work uh, in, in the future as well. So I think this is, this is something very valuable to do. And just to add a little bit to that, I think documentation also is super valuable, right? Like I bet everyone here in the room has a confluence or an internal wiki with a whole bunch of stuff pasted in there of like, when this happens, do this, when this happens, do that. And, and it's almost like if you take that knowledge and kind of bring it up, you can start sharing it with other people. Um, and then you don't have to maintain that page. You can just say, when this happens, go to the documentation that we've helped you know, push some changes into that. 
And how about code reviews? Do any of your organizations participate in doing code reviews for other people's patches? And how, is that, how does that help you, and how does that help the projects? Yeah. <clears throat> I'll say I think the same thing when you do the code reviews. You get involved into that discussion, right? So many people come and they tell, like, OK, uh, you might see like, okay, at first stage, this look, code looks good, but when you have that discussion start going, then you, re you realize, okay, there might be that use case, and what m I am thinking like, okay, this, can con uh, this code can just uh, work fine in this requirement, but there are a lot of other things also. And that code review, that getting the discussion going on and all, that also help when you do any bug fix or feature implementation or any code thing, right? So because you you get to know the complete knowledge of that uh, surrounding of that code change impact or any like regression it's going to cause. So code review, I feel like, I mean, when I started like uh, in Tempest and NOAA, more than that, uh, just pushing the code, my main target was doing more and more code review. So that helps you to understand the code and more than that, like the discussion and the the reasoning, like why it has been done that way, why it has not been done that way. So that gives you more like knowledge and understanding how you can use it in a better way or how you can fix and implement the feature in better ways. So I feel like that's as important as like uh, fixing any code or implementing any feature. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. And I think code review is nice and important when you're like getting told to, to learn uh, early on, you get to see how people are implementing things. For example, I've, I've learned a lot about how to, for example, introduce uh, you know, tests that are purposely failing in, in one patch and then actually implement the fix in the next patch. And I would have never kind of thought about that, but being that exposure and seeing how uh, that happens is, is really, really helpful. But I also feel from another sense, um, in a weird way, I kind of see it as a, some sort of karma, right? If you're gonna be um, pushing up code all the time, uh, you need reviews to get your code in. Well, you also need to do a little bit of, of, of your part to do your part of reviews so other people can get their code in. Um, we need the, the back and forth because if we don't have that, we can't you know, get, things, get things through eventually. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think also the, the fact of participating or even being exposed to the, to the workflow of reviews, et cetera, is something that at least at CERN you see that it has become also a learning exercise because you end up learning for all these experienced people from the community. It's something that then you bring home to your organization and you see internally that this culture of, of reviews, how it works upstream, is something that then you can implement on other internal workflows for other tools in, the, in your organization. And not only that, also learning from the experienced developers in the way they structure code, they, they propose the different features. We have some tools internally that are very specific to CERN, but they, you see that there's a lot of inspiration of all the experience gain contributed on upstream, of all the projects, of all the different uh, open stack projects, and I think it's valuable to get this experience from, from all the community, and then you bring it home and you use it for different purposes. So I think this is, yeah. this is a good thing as well. Yeah, and one important part in that is like, don't think always you have to do complete code review of that change. So it's always like, because nobody knows everything. So even like as an operator also, you don't need to validate that code with 100% guarantee. If you can just think, okay, in upgrade, this thing can cause the issue. You just comment that, review that part only. So that is also helpful, the partial review, the something that you can verify and say, okay, this thing has been changed, so this is all good from my side, other part I have not reviewed. So those kind of things are always helpful to do like uh, partial review also. Because sometimes we think, okay, this has been code done, there are a lot of things, I don't know these things, so let's not review that. I don't think that part. And I think the nice important thing to add to that is that review, we are not necessarily code review. Sometimes it's review of the thought or the idea or, or the process. And as, as maybe a, a non-technical contributor or mostly an operator, you know, for example, you mentioned the Manila case, you know, you might have, I don't know the details, but maybe you didn't actually look at the specifics of the code, but you were more thinking about the overall concept of how it's gonna affect all of this and bringing your feedback and saying, I don't think that this is gonna be good. 
And I think the nice thing with doing that is because of, our, of the open source communities in general value that. And what they do is uh, you can't possibly review everything. But what happens is when you are an active reviewer, um, you know, they will reach out to you and say, hey, we know that you do this. And we're thinking of doing that. So could you give us some, you know, give us your two cents about that? And so by being a more active participant, um, you get a chance to kind of get called out, let's say, and, and said, hey, um, can, you, can you give us some insights or thoughts about you know, if this is a good idea or not a good idea? Would you use this? Would you not use this? And things like that. So that kind of leads into design discussions. So that's sort of on the spot. But like, do you find it valuable to participate in the advanced design discussions, like sharing your use cases, looking ahead to what the project should be over the coming years? Yeah, so, and that, that's where like the important part, even the RBAC, I can give the example. So as a developer, like we think this has, can be done in that way, this we can implement this way, we can give, give these, these the option in this feature, right? But like when, there are a lot of use case and a lot of requirement, right? And it can be used in very different, different ways. So getting that design, like the feedback in early stage saves a lot of time. And our back example, I can give very specific, like initially we thought of like giving you the kind of a isolation between system level access versus project level access versus domain level access, then reader, admin, a lot of things. And we started the implementation, right? And uh, uh, we had at one stage, we were saying, okay, these system admin system level isolation and all is ready and you can use it. Then we got a setback that no, we don't need that. They break us. So we, what we need is exact this particular project reader and all only. So then we realized, okay, we have to go back and change the design, change our implementation to make it more useful and not to break the operator. So that's a really good example and experience for us, like having the earlier design reviews, spec reviews, the idea reviews is very, very important. And that's where like uh, from the like upstream community side also, I request operators to keep engaged with us, even on OpenStack discuss mailing list, IRC, even you don't want to review the spec or something, but you still can give feedback. And that's where like <clears throat> we have the mix. One example is called Mohammed. Like he's always on IRC there and something we are doing, he keep uh, stopping us. Okay, this can break that. This is, should be done that way. And that's a really good earlier feedback we receive from many operator. And that's like as important as like we spend time and save time and it will be like more useful if operator, it is, it is more close to operator requirement. That's how it should be. And that's where the spec review is important. I think that I, I kind of have like two approaches to this. I think that um, if you know if you feel like you want to be involved in a design discussion, you know, be there. Uh, the community is open. There's no like registration or anything. As long as you're in the event, you can open the door, come in, and sit. And there's no like obligation or anything. But I do find that sometimes it could be very intimidating because you know you feel like you know, for example, you're sitting in like a I don't want to call out Nova, right? But Nova's a very complex project. You come in and sit in a Nova design session and you might feel very like, we're overwhelmed. Um, but I always think that by going and still just, you know, sitting there and just listening, that could be very, very useful because you'll just, you know, you'll start to see how the thought process goes and some of the things that the different members are paying attention to. And, and there will be something that you can bring to the table. Like I really believe that no matter how you know, deep you know all of the deeps of the depths of Nova code or how little you just use it as just a package you install, I think there's something you can bring to the table to that discussion um, because nobody knows the whole thing. Um, everybody has different components that they can bring to the table. Um, and so, you know, rather than just saying this is going to be too advanced of a topic for me to be around, um, if the topic looks like it, you know, it could be relevant to you, just sit and listen. Um, if you don't, if you aren't able to contribute anything, if anything, you'll get a lot of very useful information out of it. Um, and then potentially the next time around, you know, you'll probably say, okay, well, I, I feel like a little bit more comfortable with this subject and maybe I can uh, jump into that. Uh, I think this, uh, this is a good point because in particular these days, I don't know, if you, you jump today into OpenStack, that at the end is a, 
a project that has been running for many years. So yeah, you, you might feel overwhelmed with all these projects and history and, and people. So, so I think it's good for people to have this mindset that when you join the project, it will be some time that you have to get to know all the bits and pieces, how things evolve in, what is the direction of the different projects, and then over time you will be confident enough to get feedback, to contribute, to find your, your, your area of comfort among all that landscape of projects. But coming also back to the, the, the question of participating in design and, and, and features, um, I think this back to, to one of the points I, I mentioned at the beginning. So at the end, you have this project, you trust it to be used as a core component of your infrastructure. So I think it makes sense that you want at least to, to make your, uh, your needs um, visible to the community. So maybe this way, uh, maybe you will get feedback from others, raise interest on A or B. And, and I think we have plenty of, of mechanisms to, to discuss all these different ideas yeah, from, from PTGs, IRCs, blueprints. And yeah, I think it's something positive that, that people contribute, for instance, at, at CERN with something like, a, I remember, I don't know, this uh, sales B2 in Nova that I, I remember Bermiro was, uh, was participating and, and giving a lot of feedback and we implemented many features. It was something that, at the end of the day, it allowed us to scale to the size we, we, we are running these days. So I think this can be very positive. So we're pretty close to the end of the time, but the last two things I want to cover. One is participating in things like uh, contributing CI resources and developing tests and things like that. And then I'll come back around to the last question around leadership roles, because I know some of you have actually served as project leaders and board members as well. So um, testing, releases, QA, that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah that's a really uh, important part for community because they are not like, the, the things which people directly use in their production or get the money from customer. But you have to realize like how important they are for the software development in community. So myself like being a QA person, what, what I feel like if we don't do the QA in upstream, how unstable that code can be. And you can see how much effort every say a vendor or distributor or operator they have to spend in their downstream testing like everyone duplicating the effort and all. So QA is very, very essential thing for open source, especially where you have like a lot of people calibrating with different ideas and all. So you have to verify things at the central place and where like that code is being consumed in like say private cloud, public cloud and distribution and all. So you have a lot of use case. So you have to test with the certain like stability. Okay, these are the things. Uh, passing all these set of standard tests. So we are making sure there is uh, like the uh, part of a, a basic, uh, I can say, the stability. I'll not say like it's 100% stability it gives, but definitely that part and then release is obviously the always the uh, background uh, heroic effort, you can say, releasing like we have around more than 600, 700 deliverables in OpenStack, I've released him to the release and all. Then requirement, infrastructure, CICD, that is not easy to build and test. So all these, uh, we can say the support team are the pillar for this software development. And in community, like we used to have a lot of people contributing in that and helping, but nowadays things has been strong. So we also like uh, if more and more people help in those, so they, that thing help indirectly to y you only, instead of like you might not be using them directly, but that's the base like of the community, I feel it's very important. Yeah, something I, I want to add up a little bit to that is I, um, Vexos is part of one of the many organizations that provide infrastructure to the open infra community. Um, so one of the things that maybe you could very much do is if you have a cloud and it's accessible and you have some extra spare resources, and that's something you can look into um, because obviously these resources are being used to test OpenStack and that could be a very easy way to you know, be able to support the community without having to, um, let's say, do too much man hours or something like that. Essentially, he, the, you know, the, the team just needs a username and a password and, and, and an endpoint. Um, and they can make use of that with Zool and everything. So perhaps that could be a way that you know you can think of you know contributing by just 
providing some cloud resources um, for all the QA that um, Gansham just talked about to, to work on. And I think it, it, it will be important to stress the point that I think all this infrastructure, all what is in, there in place to do QA, to do testing, I think it's part of the success of, of, the, of the project. Because I don't know, I, I remember at the beginning when we were when I joined CERN and we were participating back in the day in all these uh, Fedora OpenStack test days, and you were testing their, their releases, et cetera, and how things have improved over time. I think it's, it's thanks to all this infrastructure that is there to do tests and, and so on. And also a little bit connected to this, it's like contributing, it's also contributing to the project, but also from operators and, and many other people, the fact is that you want also to run this product in production, and running in production implies many other many other things that you can contribute there as well, like I don't know, packaging or or testing of these deployments for the different uh, distributors. So I think this this opens many many areas that, that people can feel welcome to to contribute or more comfortable contributing when when they are running OpenStack in in production. Yeah. So last one, um, leadership roles. You know, it's kind of keeping the, the community functioning and the pro development moving forward also involves a lot of things that aren't necessarily development. Um, so what motivated you to serve on the TC and on the board? Yeah. So initially, like honestly saying, when I was doing all this coding and development, I hated all this leadership role. And, and I was like, why we require that, right? But when like you, you manage that large community and like the diversity and cultural thing and you need uh, this big community to go into the same direction and most important the transparency and all these like you hear everyone voice. So for all these things you need a leadership, good leadership who provide the platform for everyone who makes sure like things are going in right direction, right? Because when it comes to the culture, different culture working together, you need some kind of a really good standards and, and the leadership also like where we make sure things are working fine. And other part leadership, I think the define the process because as an individual, you can do like a lot of good thing at certain level. Group, you can do a lot of good thing at certain level, but when it comes to the large community and all, so it has to be driven by the process and process with like transparent process, openness, because we are in open community. So all these process, you have to define the process, make sure process are running fine in an in a openness and transparent way, so that leadership is very, very important. And that's where I also started, like, if I can help in leadership, because that is as important as like posting a bug fix or code or a review. And from like TC and also like from board, I, I feel like uh, another, another important aspect is that you get connect the community's developer all with the, with the high level of strategical discussion, like where the community need is. So you understand that and you try to fill that gap at leadership level in terms of the like process defining or technical help or st like strategic discussing at the board level and see how, how things can go on. But I feel like this is like the main important part for this openness of the community we need. Yeah. I agree, I think you're making really good points um, and, and, I, and I pretty much echo most of that. But what I wanna share is like a small story of how I got started with the leadership side of things. Um, actually, it was Emilien uh, Mackey who used to be on the TC and he had reached out one day uh, on, on a message and said, hey, the TC is discussing a topic that might be interesting to you as an operator. Um, and to be honest, I'd really never even worked or ever talked to the TC before. So I, I, I engaged in that conversation and I was like, this is an interesting technical discussion uh, to be around. I started attending the, the weekly meetings or the bi-weekly meetings at the time that were being held. Um, and then as I started attending that, I was like, okay, I, I start to see and understand the point of this. And then slowly but surely, 
I made my way into the TC, and then I eventually um, had support with Doug Hellman, who got, helped me into getting uh, to be the chair of the TC as well. So the thing is, you know, I, I want to, I hope I can be the Emily for some of the people here to ask and say, uh, just show up, you know, sit in, sit in the meeting, look at what's going on, and you might find that there's some interest in there for you to participate in that conversation. Um, and eventually just being around enough will kind of motivate you to start and saying, well, I want to be, take a more active role in this um, exact thing. I might talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, I haven't had a, 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 a management role in the, in, in, in OpenStack yet, but from people at CERN, like like Tim that was in the foundation board, from Elmiro that was uh, as well, and the technical committee, user committee, I think the, the I stress the part that uh, Gansan was mentioning of there is a lot to, about, about the, the process of how this all works together. And being there, I think it helps to, to oil that process and, and yeah, reduce the, the frictions and, and move towards this, this openness that he was mentioning. And I think that is something that is, is, should be a core value of the, of the project. I think we're about out of time. It's going to be a lunch break. Thank you to our panelists and for all your organizations do for open source. Um, We'd like to hear your story, too. There's a link up there. We're gathering those stories to kind of inform and help teach other organizations uh, the value of participation and what they can get out of it. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Thank you for hosting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.